Hello Pot ISL, welcome to part 3 of our Fujimi 112 Nissan Skyline R32 GTR video build. So, we had a bit of extra footage left over today, so we're going to jump straight in and carry on work with the wheels, which was supposed to be added in the last video, but it ran over because I have way too much footage. <laughs> then we're going to progress to trying to detail up our engine bay a bit. The kit's good. Um... It's lacking in detail in a lot of areas. There's some stuff there in the engine bay. There's a lot of stuff missing. So we're going to add some wiring, some brake lines, hosing, scratch build a few bits. And this is only the start of what we're going to do today. So grab a cuppa, get your feet up, have a little watch, and then watch me waffle on and build this model. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications to get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. So let's start off where we left off last time. So we've got our wheels. These are these beautiful Studio Rosso three-piece rim so two parts of resin absolutely flawlessly uh cast resin really is beautiful so we've got the three parts of the wheel the decals uh the wheel nut bolts themselves as well which we'll paint up later on and our tire valve stems too so these are absolutely stunning pieces of resin really really clean all we're going to do is grab our tamiya craft knife and just grab those little wisps of resin flash from the edge um this is the best resin i've ever seen absolutely beautiful but these wheels are like 50 odd pounds really heavy um uh, they're quite expensive what they are really um but they are stunning they're absolutely beautiful pieces of resin um so you got the resin wheel itself which you don't want to drop like that um we've got the turned aluminium rim of the wheel and those beautiful resin uh, tires as well so just some simple cleanup we're just going around getting all the little wisps of resin off no real pressure applied once we've done that we're coming with a 400 custom hours of ump standard it's been cut to size uh just get in there just tidy up those little wisps that were just cut off and that's it that's all the wheel needs really for any uh sanding if we get any dust off there while we're at it with our mickey mouse toothbrush and then we can come in with some airbrush cleaner up airbrush cleaner and uh we'll give her all a good clean up so there we go the beautiful turned aluminium rim now wondering on the wheel color there were several colors chosen including the bronze the, the rim chrome but i eventually settled on black i've got a picture of the blue car with the black wheels it looks phenomenal that's what we're in for so quick test fit to make sure everything orientated the right way then we've got our UMP airbrush cleaner on our Mickey Mouse toothbrush. I was go around and clean all the rim because unlike plastics, resin does have a release agent on it. So it's well worth cleaning. You can even use that IPA based product like UMP airbrush cleaner or a like dishwash soap. Very liquid and the like. Dawn if you live in the States. And just give it a good clean. Make sure it's stuttery dry. Then we can mount it and get it prepped, ready for primer. So Wheel colour was a choice. We settled on gloss black. Not a problem at all. We also need to pick a colour for the tyres as well. Because obviously these aren't rubber. They are resin. Um, so it was a tough call on what to do. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. So mounting the wheels for paint. So we've got the wheels on some cocktail stick, Sorry. Cotton buds. And then mounted to micro brushes. And then the rims. We decided to add um, some 3M sticky pads. And stick them to that temporarily. Now we've got some Mr. Surface uh, 1500 black. Thinned with Mr. Hobby Level and Thinner. Through our Ultimate Apex. Uh, 0.35 at 18 PSI. And we're going to prime them up. Now why am I priming with this? I don't tend to use this primer very often. As a primer. I like it as a colour. I think it's a very nice. Satin. Light black. Really dark grey black colour. And I like it for plastic trim and things like that. So I wanted to spray it on a wheel and come back and look at it and see what it looked like as the tyre colour. Because I had a sneaky suspicion 
it was going to be a good candidate, and it was. It looked absolutely brilliant. Once dry as a tie colour, tie colour. So we just went round two, three light coats all the way around all the model. Just taking our time. We don't need to flood this on. Um, it does take a few coats to build up, but it is a nice primer to be fair. I just prefer our primer because it's a bit more forgiving and it will fill in those micro blemishes too. So here we go, the resin tires. These are Manson 3M pads. And after testing, this looked the absolute perfect colour um, to simulate the tie colour. So that's what we went for. So two birds, one stone. Not only did we get everything primed, but we got the tie colour down at the same time. Lots of little tricky angles and recesses here because of the tread. So take your time. Just build it up, go around, get all the different angles and sides and inside, all around the rim. Just take your time, build it up slowly, and uh, you'll have no issues at all. But yeah, two birds, one stone, as well work. What's the saying? Work smarter, not harder. So once that's dried overnight, we've got some Tamiya TS14 Black. This has been decanted and thinned with Tamiya Lacquer Thin and Retarder. We've got our Ultimate Apex, 0.35 needle, and we're at 18 PSI. And we're going to give this two, three, maybe even four coats of paint to get a nice glossy finish because we're looking for a gloss black. And while this isn't going to be our final finish, we're going to use Mr. Hobby Super Clear uh, UV Cut on this today. So we want to give her all the help we can. No 2K on the wheels. I'm just going to build this up slowly, get all the inside of the wheel as well. Get all those angles and recesses. Very important on this. And just build it up slow. The tear sprays are some of my favourite paints. Decanted and airbrushed. They work very, very well. They're certainly on par with the LP paints. But they are different. A lot of people say they're the same paints. They're not. They are a different paint. Definitely different colours. And a different composition of paint I think as well. Although they are both lacquers. So a couple of coats. Building it up as we go. My experience, these paints like to go on wet. So the first coat is quite a dry coat. And then the second, third, and fourth are subsequently wetter. To build up that coat, it gives a nice gloss finish. I find if you apply them thin, you get a grainy effect on them. So I like to lay them down wet. Not hosing it on, but just enough on there to give a wet look. And there we go. Final coat. Make sure we get everywhere. We've got a nice gloss black finish there. Doesn't take all that much paint either because we're already primed in black. The coverage is nice and quick. Apex doing its job as always. There we go. Nice gloss black finish. One final go around the rim. And there we go. Now decals. The wheels came with several colour decals. Um, from red, black, silver, gold. And these luminous orange. So... We, and I mean we, because as a collective in the Hangout, we chose the luminous colour. Uh, and I think we'll match this with the sim colour calipers on the car as well. So there's two decals per wheel. So we pop one on there. We've got our Tamiya decal tweezers there. Let's apply them in place carefully. Standard procedure, pop them in place, get them all lined up, remove any excess moisture, and then we hit them with... Our decal solution of choice, which today will be UMP normal. And there we go, the fourth and final one. Really nice decals. I was quite worried about these. Um, but they actually came off the backing paper well, laid down pretty well, and set in place well too. The other decal on the other side as well. And that's it. These luminous green, luminous yellow, whatever you want to call it, look really well against the gloss black. And once hit with UMP normal, Decal solution in place. We can then leave them overnight and then come back and clear coat them. So we've got the Mr. Hobby Super Clear. And uh, this is our chassis we painted in the last video. Now I was going to wear a brush it and I thought, you know what, we'll be there all day. So let's just use the spray can. Uh, give it a few light coats, then come in, get some wet coats down, and uh, get the chassis and the engine bay all glossed up nice and quickly and easily. Now it takes a long time to dry this, so make sure you're using it on part. It's not going to handle for a while because it does bite me in the bum in a minute. And we have to go back and redo a little bit of work. But it was worth fixing because the overall finish was much, much better. But no problems on the chassis because you don't need this right away. This can sit 
uh, for a good week or so and fully cure dry. Uh, but reducing the spray can, this is a skill you need to pick up and learn. It's way too easy to hose it on. So just take your time. Make sure you're not a different dif distance away. And again, in my experience, spray cans, you've got to put them down a little bit wetter. Um, so go around with a slightly lighter coat to begin with and then start building it up as you go around. For God's sake, make sure you've got a good respirator on, a window open, spray booth going, gloves on, because this stuff stinks to high heaven. It absolutely does stink. So make sure you've got good ventilation. You're not sat in the living room with your family, kids, and the budgie. Uh, but there you go. As you can see, a few coats later, you've got a nice gloss coat in that engine bay. Now, what does become totally apparent to me is I've missed two huge ejector pin marks in the engine bay, which for some reason I didn't really notice before I cleared, and then I saw them and I was like, crap. So what do we do here? We could strip it, redo it all, or we'll just live with them, or we'll adapt and overcome later on. We will figure this out as we go. But yeah. As soon as the gloss coat went on, I noticed them and thought they're injected pin marks. I didn't get rid of them. You stupid boy. But hey, it's just one of those things. So there we go. Plenty of coats. Building it up nice. Getting all those angles. All the little recesses. We're probably leaving five, ten minutes between each coat. Coming back, shaking the can up each time. Very important to keep the can of aerosol shake, sh shook, shaken up. Shaked up, whatever you want to call it. And there we go. Get a nice finish now on there. There we are. As you can see, after a few coats, we've got a fairly decent gloss. It's not perfect at all, but I don't expect it to be using this type of gloss, but it's perfectly adequate for what we want. Engine bay is looking good, so that can sit and dry now and uh, cure off camera for a good week or so before we start messing about with it again. But yeah, the spray can works well. We've got some clips underneath to try and hold it because it is a nightmare. I have already dropped it once and uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that. So we need to prop it up now. I'll let it dry. So a little bit of precarious propping using various, well, props. <laughs> very simple ones around the bench we can get it to stand up out of the way now we've got the mr hobby uh 112 i believe it is uv super clear cut uh we've thinned it with mr hobby level and thinner about 50 60 percent just looking what's in there and it's our mr level and thinner in my new bottles get those off amazon they are vape bottles empty ones very handy for this we give it a good mix up and then we can pop a clear coat down on our engine parts now these are the parts that I, I went back and redid. So we fully glossed up all the engine and the cam cover and some other various components, as you can see there on our stand. Um, coming to assemble the engine, um, even though the clear coat had dried for a, a good few days, um, a bit of manipulations needed to get the engine parts on. Fingerprints appeared. It actually pushed the paint uh, because it doesn't dry anywhere near as fast or as hard. So we actually ended up redoing those. So whilst that dries, we then work back on our wheels. So we've got some four-minute speed epoxy, which I bought off Amazon. In hindsight, four-minute might have been a little bit too fast. This stuff goes off really quick, really... Um, it gets some real heat to it too. So I... Tried the first bit, worked absolutely great, really well. I had to mix several bits, and maybe a bit more, you know, a 10 minute one might have been a bit better. Um, but it is what it is. It's what I got from uh, for my money. So, yeah, there you go. If you want a fast drying one, this certainly does the trick because it dries lightning quick. As you can see, I've been attacked by a smurf on my arm. A bit of overspray from painting the car earlier. But mix this stuff up well. When it says four minutes, you've got four minutes. This stuff dries really quick, really, really fast. And like I say, it gets super hot. So we made sure everything's orientated the right way. So everything's going to fit in. Because I want this to be a one-shot deal. Once it's in, we don't want to be taking it back off and mucking around with it. Because we've only got a certain amount of time to work with it. 
So you're going to apply some light spots all around where that rim is going to sit. Place the rim in place. Make sure it's pushed fully home. Wipe off any excess. And then leave it well alone to dry. So there we go. That's in place. A little bit of excess there. So we'll wipe it off with our finger. Wouldn't advise doing that as I found out later. So cotton bud. Wipe it off. Make sure your rim's nice and clean. And then the tyre and wheel assembly into the back. Just testing that it fits and it is the right way. And then we we'll grab a nice generous dollop. And put it near the back of the wheel. We don't want it near the front because we don't go anywhere near the front of the wheel. And we can see we're just getting a, a generous amount. All the way around. We'll repeat this for each and every wheel. I think we have to do about three mixes. You can see one's already dry, top right. It's gone orange. Uh, and that has dried within the time it took me to stick the four rims on the tyres. It really was quick. So I think it took three mixes in total to do all these. We get it in place. There's a little bit of wiggle room on the wheel, so make sure it is centred. Make sure it's pushed fully home and that you get rid of any excess now because you've got very little time. And once this dries, it's not coming off. Full stop, it is not coming off. Don't get it on your hands. Don't get it on your skin or your clothes. And there we go. Dried the next day. Brilliant. Tire color looks fantastic. Wheel color looks great. And the decals look phenomenal as well. So very happy how these turned out. Mr. Service of 500 Black is a great tire color. Now, engine assembly as you see we're a bit all over the place today because we have to keep leaving things to dry so we're back and forth working on different things leaving that coming back so this is the original assembly of the engine i was doing this on a live show i think it was a sunday morning live show uh and everything's going well so far everything's fitting in great so we get the sun pin now there's no glue needed on this it is all click and screw together uh, and it's at this moment now i start to notice the issues with that clear coat on the cam cover um yeah and the Campbell cover too so it needs a bit of manipulation to get these in place and it was smudging quite a bit so not happy with how it went so i completely stripped them back reprimed repainted and re 2 k them um to make them look 10 times better than they were so fixed it sorted it much happier now we can assemble all the parts. This is our turbo assembly. Now, it did actually be one piece originally. It did actually break. It's a very weak bit of plastic. So we kept it in half. It's not a bother at all. There's two located points that go on the engine. We've got our nice 3D printed turbos there as well that Dan very kindly did for us. There we go. It's case pushing those home. And then there's a screw in the middle that holds it all together like so. There we go. Make sure they are straight, all orientated the right way. And these things look a million times better than the standard turbos. And I use that word in the loosest sense I can. Um, but yeah, there we are. So this is the repainted parts now. This is uh, about four or five days later. Stripped, reprimed, repainted, 2K cleared. Left for a couple of days to dry and is much better, a lot better. We've got a much deeper gloss, a much more resilient finish. Yeah, very happy I did this. It took a bit of time to do. And it was a lot of mucking about and what have you, but I think it was time well spent. As you can see, the parts do need a little bit of manhandling to get them in place. But the 2K is a lot more resilient. Just checking I haven't caused any damage, and I haven't. Good stuff, 2K. It really does dry nice and hard and fast. If we pop our sump in. We're still going to give all the engine a wash. So we'll do that later. For the purposes of today, I just wanted to get it all in place and together assembled. So we get that in. We get all our alternator, drive belt, auxiliary belt system in place. So again, these all just push in place and then screw in. Like so. All need a wash on them. We'll do that at a later date. And then there's a couple of screws. A nice big long one goes through the bottom pulley. They're screwed in place. And then we've got one for the fan. So it just screws in place there. Simple as that.
And there we go. There's our engine assembled. We got a sticker. This is one part of the kit I am disappointed about that these are stickers and not decals. But then, in hindsight, on the car, it'll be a sticker. So it's one of those, isn't it? Am I happy with it? I don't know. I think I am. Um, it's just being used to decals on kits. It's what you'd expect. But this looks pretty decent. It's not bad at all. Now, so scratch building, we've got our Tamiya pin vise and our micro drills. The kit is quite sparse on engine detail, so I resigned myself and decided to add some detail. Q about four days of work, hours and hours of footage of me scratch building, adding wiring, adding pipes, all sorts of bits. So we drilled some holes into our brake master cylinder and now we're drilling them into the abs pump and what we're going to do is pipe them all up i've got some good reference shots of the car and the ngb shows all these pipes down the back so we've got our micro drill our tamiya pin vice and we're just screwing sorry drilling uh, the holes in place for the pipes and this is the wire we're going to use this is some ethernet cable that alan parker very kindly gave me so we're just stripping it with some generic wire cutters and then cutting it and we want the copper wire inside. It's a single core copper wire. And then we can use our Tamiya bending pliers to manipulate and shape this to the shape we need for all the brake lines. This was a lot of work. I'm not gonna lie, I was cursing Alan because it was Alan's idea to do this on his car and it pushed me to do mine. So a lot of work, but I think the overall result was well worth the time spent. Now the ABS pump is missing a lower section. I have a ton of plastic. This is only one section of the part I've got. These are all square and rectangular pieces. I've got hundreds of packs of this stuff. I picked up many, many moons ago and a very good job lot of it. So you name the shape, I've got it. So I picked a couple of suitable pieces weighed it up had a look at one's too big next one's too hot next bed is too soft goldilocks would be proud uh we picked the right size looked at it think yeah let's get our razor saw and we'll cut a small section off this is the jlc razor saw then we've got a ump 400 customizable sander to sand all the edges then we've got a suji burrito half moon file we just add a little bit of detail to the edge, add a half moon to the edge, just to give it a visual interest. So a bit of careful filing, just to reprofile the edges. Um, any particular reason for doing this is just to add a little bit of interest to the look of it more than anything. So it's not just a boring square block. There we go. We've got some copper, uh, sorry, brass tubing, and we're going to use our hammer to flatten the very edge. And then use our knife, which my big head's in the way, and roll the knife to cut the uh, brass. Then we can smooth off the edge of our Tamiya diamond file. And with a bit of uh, Loctite Perfect Pen, CA glue, we can pop both of these in place. And if you look at the real pump, I'll try and remember to put a picture in, I'll probably forget. You will see that this doesn't look too bad. There's two little fittings that go here, just underneath the two we drilled out before on the pump. Line them up. And there we go. One is slightly bigger than the other, but bang, it's one of them. Uh, we just move that one down a bit to line it up, and there we are. Put it underneath, just needs a lick of paint, and it'll look the part. Quite happy with that. A little bit of simple scratch building, adds a bit more detail, and gives us somewhere for the actual brake uh, pipes to go to. Now, looking at the master cylinder, I thought, I can do better than this. So I've got some clear acrylic rod. I'm just weighing up the size of it, having a little look. My plan is, I've already tested it on the very top of it, is to drill through, hollow it out, add some sort of paint or wash, and make it simulate the brake fluid. So we've got our JLC razor saw again. 
to cut off the appropriate size. As you can see on the left hand side, we've got our Proxon mini tool. So we cut it off, flatten the edge with a 240 customizable sander. So we've got a nice flat edge to work with. And then we'll pop this in our pliers, Leatherman tool. It doesn't matter if we scratch the edge because we're going to rough this up in a bit anyway. I'm just going to drill, not all the way through, but nearly all the way through to hollow the center out. So there we go. That's drilled through. We give it that quick clean up. Then we'll pop it back on the drill bit and we'll screw it in place almost so it holds it for us. There we go. Pop it back on. These are great multi tools. And there we go. Grab a 240 thinny sponge. I'm just going to use that to rough up the edge and give it that opaque look that a brake cylinder has. We've got some Alclad sepia, a great idea of my buddy Simon Chories. I tried it neat and it was a little bit too dark, so I then thinned it with a little bit of um, Windsor Newton Sanso door. Use a micro brush. We're going to fill it nearly all the way up. Just add a drop at a time until we're filled to, um, well, where we need to be. There we go. We'll let that dry overnight and we can come back the next day and assemble it together. So there we go. Fill it up slowly. Leave it to dry. Now, I want to add a little bit more detail to this. So, I've got some very small photo etch ball head detail part nuts, I suppose they are. A little dab of CA glue. We've got our Sizo precision tweezers here which you can get off umpretail.com along with a lot of the stuff in our videos and we'll just glue those in place and then a dab of perfect loctite ca glue we can get our newly turned and drilled out brake fluid reservoir make sure it's all straight and in the middle and there we go looks a million times better already now the brake fluid is a touch dark i would like to have done it a little bit lighter um but let's just say it's very old brake fluid and it needs a change on flush i also made a cap for it i got a piece of thin uh sorry i got a piece of uh, styrene rod cut a little sliver off sanded it painted it yellow we glued it in place and there we go there's our much better looking in my opinion brake reservoir fluid reservoir on our master cylinder so time well spent there and now we've got our copper wire, we've got our Tamiya mini bending pliers. And now we're going to pipe this up. So there's five pipes in total. Uh, they run to and from the pump to the uh, reservoir, the master cylinder, and then off around the car to the brake lines. Now I did contemplate doing the whole brake lines front to rear, and I thought better of it. So they just go underneath the back of the firewall bulkhead and they stop. But they give us a good bit of visual interest in the engine bay but this took hours this must have taken me three four hours to do all these brake lines they're a bit of a nightmare to line up and bend and each individual bend needed measuring and lining up make sure it fitted make sure they fitted next to each other it took a lot of work so we're only going to show very quickly this piece and then basically come back and see how it all looks once it's done so is this kind of detail worth adding on something like this i think it definitely is this is a large scale kit the engine bay has some detail it's missing a lot this is only a very small step in the scratch build and i'm going to do on this um at the end of the video we've added quite a bit but there's still quite a bit more to add um so we'll cover that in the next part hopefully but there's a lot to do and it's up to you how far you go um but for me i just want some nice visual interest in there um to add a little bit of depth to the build and i think this is quite a major part because it's highly visible on any picture of the engine bay you can see of the car so just some careful measuring and bending and what have you and uh yeah although it took a while it was pretty easy to do just a bit boring and monotonous so there we go there's the first one all bent to shape we're just gluing it in place so just test fitting it make sure it all fits in so we pushed it into both its holes it's fully pushed at the back. It's all lined up where we want it. 
So I'm happy with that. So take it out, a little dab of CA glue on this end. I should pop it in place like so. Line it up down the back. And another dab of CA glue on this end. Got tweezers. And then pop that in place too. These are the Tamiya HG tweezers. Some of my favorite tweezers. Make sure everything's lined up where we want it. And there we go. So there's brake line number two in. And then we've got three more to do. A lot of work. A lot of mucking around. But well worth it in the end. So there we go. There's all the final ones going in. They all need to line up as well at the back. We're going to go with paint now. So we've got some AK uh, real colours now. We've got a dark green. Sorry, a light green and a black. And we've made a very, very dark black green colour. Use a bit of paper here to try and keep the paint off the back of the car. Just mix the two colours together. And then we're brushing it on with one of our Winsor Newton brushes. Even though the lack of paint, they do still brush pretty well. Just be careful of any surrounding areas. You don't want to ruin all your hard work now by getting paint everywhere. Just take your time and paint it up. You're probably going to need to mix more as you go. Just keep an eye on the colour. And you'll be all good. So there we go, that's how I'm all painted up. I need to make some clips for the back now. So we're just using some, um, I don't know what kind of stand you call it. It's like a U-shape, very shallow U-shape. Um, just cut it to size, a little dab of CA glue, pop it in place, push it home. We're going to put three down the back in total. And these will hold all the brake lines nice and square, and make them look a lot neater. We then come in with some Tamiya, it's not Tamiya, sorry, AK Real Colour Middle Stone, thinned of a touch of white. I'm just going to very delicately and carefully brush paint these to give the colour of the faded white clips. And then add a bit of a wash to our ABS pump we did earlier. And that is the brake lines done. A lot of work, what I'm looking about, but well worth it. Now, we're going to add some wiring to the ABS pump now as well. So we've doubled over a length of wire, cut it so that the wire lengths are equal, spun the wire in our fingers a little bit to make a little loom, and then a couple of dabs of CA glue on each piece of wire. We've got some Top Studio resin electrical connectors. There's holes already in the back of them. So we're just popping them in place like so. We'll cut them off with our razor saw, tidy them up with a 400 UMP customizable sander, so repeat make another one an identical one then make them into another little loom doubled up as well and then we can glue these in place you can just see the bottom left i'm a little bit out of shot i've got a new camera mount and it does need tweaking a bit but you can just see them now at the back of the abs pump and then there we go there's all our brake lines abs pump scratch build part the wiring it's not the best, but it's certainly better than the poor detail we had. Now, top left of the engine is a weird vacuum thing with two hoses on. I've got no idea what it is. So I took an old plastic bike suspension strut, cut a little bit off. We've got some Top Studio hose, a little length of wire in between so we can manipulate it. Cut it to size, stripped the very end, glued it in place like so. Drilled two holes in the scratchable part we made. So glue the wire in, then glue the outer sheath of the wire put in, and then we can bring the hose down like so. And there we go. And then repeat for the bottom. So we've got two pieces. And then we'll glue this in place, fold the references of the real car that we've got and place those hoses where they go. I've got no idea what this part is. If anybody knows, please let me know. I've followed real pictures of the car to do it. I've got my optimizer on because these parts, are, even though it's a big car, they are getting a bit small. But a little bit of scratch building using some scrap parts that I had off a bike kit. You know, it adds a bit of detail and interest. And there we go, we got our hose in place. One goes over the top of the master cylinder, one goes underneath. And again, adds a little bit more visual interest to the kit.
So we have no window wiper motor. So using the same suspension uh, fork of the old plastic bike kit, we cut a section off. Looking for a part of my spurs box, I spotted a mass airflow sensor off a of BMW 6 Series. So we cut that off. Two. Sanded it clean. We cut off the fork, leaving a little nub at the top. And a little dab of glue. Glued it in place. And there we go. And we'll paint that part silver. Add a bit of wiring and hey presto, we've got a scratch built window wiper motor, which when you look at the real thing, doesn't look too bad to be honest. I didn't do too bad a job. So that's glued in place. Our radiator top now, there's a hose at the top, I think it's an expansion hose. So we're going to drill the top, we've drilled the bracket and we're going to add a piece of hose each side. So the same hose as before, with a bit of wire in between. Glue one end in, get the other end, manipulate it, bend it to shape, pop it in the hole, and that's that side done. We'll add the other side in a little bit when we get this place fully located where we need it. So we're screwing in place the engine bonnet stay arm. A little bit off camera because I need to tweak this camera now. It is, but it has been done now, and that's the, the bonnet stay. Now we've got the expansion bottle and the screen wash bottle. I wanted to add the screen wash coolant in each one. So I thought the best way of doing this is to spray it. So we've masked it all off and we're going to use Tamiya LP, I think it's 68, to do it. Sadly, I didn't record it. There's the empty pot to the right. <laughs> so we didn't record it, but hey-ho, here they go. They're in place on the car. You'll see them in pictures at the end. The effect is pretty good. So basically, they were masked, well, they were sprayed in white, masked, sprayed light coats of the blue, a little bit darker on the coolant than the um, screen wash. And then I missed it over with the Tamiya white primer to give it a frosted look. And it didn't turn out too bad at all. And then we're adding our other hose from the other side of our radiator. Popping our intercooler in place, screwing it in place. Like so. And then we can pop our engine in. It takes a little bit of mucking about to get it in there. And then two screws there. They're in place. This might have to come out at another stage, but I just wanted to get in today to see what it all looked like all together. So a couple of screws. Can be a little bit fiddly. Like I said, we're still going to add a wash to all this to give it a bit of depth, but we'll do that next time. And there we go. There's our engine bay. Pretty happy how some of the scratch building turned out. Top right, you'll see the wiper motor we did. We've got our uh, vacuum pump thingy, the ABS pump, all the brake lines, clips, hoses. So it's added a bit of detail. It's not the best work. I'm quite happy with that. The master cylinder brake fluid reservoir there, that looks pretty good. Um, our custom printed decal at the front. Needs a little bit of a touch up here and there. But overall, this isn't looking bad. It's had a lot more depth to the kit. And there we are. So that's where we're at today. Um, it could have been better. Could have been worse. Scratch building is not my best forte as such. Um, but it's added a bit of detail. It could be a lot more could be a lot better there's a couple of bits and bobs i may change that i might just redo mainly the clips at the back of the bulkhead uh and there's a few touch-up needed on paint here and there just on the brake lines but overall i'm happy how that's turned out i'm glad i redid those engine covers in 2k it's a much better finish it's much more resilient and harder wearing and so on so it is worth the extra effort in doing for sure so i'm glad i went back and redid it so yeah that's it. So, <laughs> when will part four be out? I don't know. The work on this this week has been brutal. Um, doing those brake lines alone took me about four hours. It was hard, boring work to do. So, I think I need a little bit of a break, but we'll chat about that tomorrow. I got a, We've got a live show tonight. It's Friday. There's a live show later on tonight. 
uh, Saturday morning tomorrow, I think it's the 20th, uh, I'm going to do my bench update, another bench update in two months. So I've got a bit to show and a bit to chat about. And we're going to talk about a next project that might slip in between the skyline. Give me a little bit of a break. It's a big kit. It's a lot of work, this. I think I need something different to work on. And I bought a very, very nice kit the other day that I paid over the odds for. But we'll chat about that tomorrow in tomorrow's bench update. So tune in tomorrow. About midday, she should be up. Um, and we'll have a chat about... Another video build we might slip in between the skyline for now. So there we are. <laughs> um, that's it. That's where we're at today. So we're back in part four at some point. I don't know when. It's not going to be put away and forgotten about. There's too much work gone into this. And I'm eager to get it done. I just don't want to get fed up working on it because I've still got a lot of detail to add to that engine base. So bear with me. We'll be back very soon. But there will be a project probably started over the weekend. Uh, and it will appear on the channel. But tune in for bench update and you'll see what I'm talking about. So that's it then. That's us for today. As always, make sure you check out Natasha Scale Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com. We can get a lot of the products shown in the video. Most of the products I show in the video, not only shown on screen, they're linked in the description. There's a big long list in the description of the video that links you to all the products. Um, check out my Paul ISM Facebook page and Instagram page. I don't post on Instagram that much. But I do use Facebook a lot. And check out the Live of the Bench page and the Off Air Hangout group as well for the live shows and the Off Air Hangout links. I will see you all soon. Make sure you tune in tonight's live show and make sure you watch my bench update tomorrow for very exciting news. And if you've got this far, hmm, put aubergine. Aubergine. You can't spell that, put um, apple in the chat. <laughs> Let's see who can spell aubergine. There we go. Thanks for watching today. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.